All right, well, shifting gears for you now, as we all know, Northeast Ohio is home to so many historic buildings, locations, and landmarks. But have you ever thought about the hidden histories behind so many of these recognized spaces? That's exactly the case for a popular new hotel in downtown Cleveland, which once played a big role helping Cleveland's gay community gather in a space of their own. We are on the corner of East 9th and Euclid in the middle of downtown Cleveland. We like to call it the corner of Main and Main, where all the, the fun stuff happens. The Schofield Building in downtown Cleveland is a constant hub of activity. Home to residences, the Kempton Schofield Hotel, and a restaurant, Betts, the middle of it all is exactly where the Kempton team wants to be. We want it to be a place where people want to go to gather and be happy. Nicole Baker is an ambassador of awesome at the hotel, which opened in 2016. But the building it's housed in has been around much longer. It was completed in 1902, the vision of architect Levi Schofield, who still influences the mission of the space today. People have always come here to have a good time and to socialize and to feel welcome. And our architect wanted that. That's why he did all the entertaining upstairs with his wife. And then when the lounge was here, it was the same thing. And it's all we're trying to do right now, too. That's the Cadillac Lounge, one of Cleveland's first gay bars. So if you see the picture, with the neon sign would have been right up there. It's a place Professor John Grabowski and Sidney Negron have studied extensively. I mean, if the site could talk, we'd have the best oral history we could ever find. Opened in 1946 by a woman named Gloria Lenahan, the upscale Cadillac Lounge served straight clients during the day and gay men at night. It was an important space for the gay community during a very different time. Um, it catered to a lot of businessmen during the day, um, and in the evenings it was still very formal. Um, in order to enter, you needed to be wearing a shirt, tie, and a jacket. Um, and it was really more of a, a tolerance of the gay community than a kind of full-fledged acceptance. While Grabowski and Negron don't have any photos of the interior of the bar, they believe it would have sat inside the current Betts restaurant on East 9th. It was two stories high. Uh, it had rich decor, it, it had incredible murals by a Cleveland muralist, and, and it had sort of a South Sea theme, something that was really kind of chic in the 1940s and 1950s. This whole place was outfitted with these like red um, velvet booths uh, and this uh, wood paneling and mirrors to kind of like make the space look bigger. While the bar was a popular spot for gay men to gather, it wasn't without its risks or rules. Men were expected to be at least 12 inches apart from each other at all time. There wasn't really a lot of kind of standing or dancing. Um, there wasn't really the ability to move your own drink, to go sit next to somebody and meet them or introduce yourselves um, in order to kind of avoid, um, you know, potential accusations of indecency or potential arrests from the vice squads which operated here. Negron says these restrictions served as a catalyst for organization and resistance in Cleveland's gay community and a reminder that LGBT LGBTQ plus lives existed long before events like Stonewall or the Cadillac Lounge. The fact that the space is here and it's remembered and it's celebrated, I think, is something that should lead people to ask other questions about the community at that time. The lounge closed in the 1970s when Grabowski says Lenahan wanted to move the bar to a new location on Prospect Avenue, but faced pushback from a city council person over proximity to religious institutions. And while the Cadillac Lounge no longer stands, its historic significance and cultural impact are things the Kempton Schofield still recognizes today and hopes to celebrate during Pride Month. We like to get you know, involved in the community and, and show you know, pride. We like to be able to express ourselves and, and cater to humanity. Well, if you want to learn more, the Western Reserve Historical Society is hosting History on Tap Pride. That is tomorrow, June 22nd, at the Cleveland History Center. We do have more info on WKYC.com. And through June, Bets, that restaurant, will actually have different Pride cocktails with proceeds benefiting the Trevor Project. And we do have a special edition of A Turning Point focusing on Pride Month and the LGBTQ community. That's tomorrow night at 7. You don't want to miss that.